This beautiful little fish is a bluegill. It's native to the eastern half of the United States, but it's also been introduced into many western states, as well as several other parts of the world. In the U.S., bluegill fishing is often the young fisherman's first experience with the sport of fishing, and many will tell you that the first fish they ever caught was a bluegill. Catching small bluegills is easy. In fact, I've caught bluegill using nothing but a bare hook as bait, and if that didn't work, attaching a small piece of paper to the hook would often do the job. Some people catch and cook their bluegill, which requires a bit of experience because bluegill are relatively small and have lots of bones. The bluegill that you see here is just a baby, so it's only a few inches long, but a full-grown adult can grow to be over a foot in length. However, most of the bluegill that people catch are in the 5 to 9 inch range. They can be found in a wide variety of freshwater habitats, from tiny backyard ponds to large lakes, drainage canals, swamps, and rivers. And with the proper setup and maintenance, the bluegill can be kept in an aquarium. However, word to the wise, they can be very aggressive and they do get quite large, so please plan your bluegill fish tank accordingly. Now let's move to a different part of the lake and have a look at some adult bluegills. This is an adult male bluegill in full spawning coloration. These large fish are sometimes referred to as bull males, and they look like a completely different fish than the one we saw at the beginning of the video. This large black spot just behind the gill cover is known as an opercular flap, and it's one of the key traits used to differentiate between similar looking species of sunfish. This flap is also sometimes referred to as an ear flap. This male is protecting this area for some reason, but I don't see any eggs or any fry. However, if there wasn't something here for him to defend, he would have swam away by now. So maybe he's still preparing an area to spawn and waiting for a lady bluegill. Here another male bluegill is keeping guard near its nest and he threatens me by extending his ear flaps. This show of aggression is usually reserved for other fish and this is the first time I've ever seen this display used by a bluegill. Hiding in the background, there's a chain pickerel looking for a meal. I love chain pickerel, so I can't resist following it to try and get some more footage of this incredibly shy fish. And then, I'm surprised by an eastern newt who just happened to be at the surface getting a breath of air. And now we're back to the bluegills. Like most other sunfish, the bluegill's appearance can vary widely from one individual to another. It's influenced by the age, the breeding status, the diet, and the geographic location of the fish. Bluegills in Florida look very different from the bluegills in New York. This male bluegill has already spawned and he's guarding a group of eggs, so he won't swim away from this spot. I've visited his nest before, and I wonder if he remembers me. Who knows, but one thing is for certain, he doesn't want me anywhere near his eggs. I've decided to name this particular bluegill the Tin Man, and I think the reason is pretty obvious. Be sure to notice the large amount of sediment around the outside of the bluegill's nest. Now, look at how clean the nest is. A typical bluegill nest is about 6 to 12 inches in diameter and located in shallow water. 
The male did a lot of work to prepare this nest for the eggs, and he's willing to defend it even in the face of an overwhelmingly large threat such as myself. The eggs that he's so carefully guarding can take anywhere from two to six days to hatch depending on the temperature of the water in this part of the lake. And now it's time to say goodbye to the Tin Man. We'll leave him to his business and go visit another fish. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a male bluegill that I like to call the Marlboro Man. The Marlboro Man is guarding a group of eggs as well as the filter from a cigarette. He can spawn multiple times in a single breeding season, so in the right conditions, bluegill numbers can grow quite quickly, and they make a great food source for the more sought-after game fish such as the largemouth bass and the northern pike. The Marlboro Man and his fellow bluegill have an important job to do, and I don't want to stand in their way. So I try not to disturb these males for too long when they're protecting their young, and with that in mind, let's move along to another male bluegill, just a short swim away from here. And I'm sure that the Marlboro Man is happy to see me leave. Here we have another male bluegill defending its nest. This particular bluegill is very aggressive, and those stripes along the side of its body are part of its threat display. As I move closer to his nest, he stops circling and prepares to confront me. This little fish means business, and he clearly wants me to back away from his territory. His nest is in an ideal spot between these large rocks. It's protected on two sides, so it's relatively easy to defend his young. This blue coloration at the bottom of its gill covers is the reason why these fish are called bluegills. There are tiny newborn fry down here, but they're very hard to see. I've disturbed this fish long enough and now it's time to move on. Male bluegills sometimes gather together at the same time to spawn in one particular location. These breeding congregations can number upwards of 50 male bluegills all nesting in the same area.
Here we are on the outskirts of a small breeding colony of bluegills where we're greeted by a male bluegill that I've come to call Slackjaw Pete. This poor fish is nursing an injury to his jaw and his right eye. This could be the result of a terrible accident or a violent run-in with a maniacal fisherman. Either way, this bluegill has seen some better days. Still, he had the tenacity and charm to spawn with a lovely lady bluegill and is now defending a large group of eggs. His injuries seem pretty severe, but they didn't prevent him from spawning, and he seems to be healing just fine. Let's have a look at what this little fish finds so precious that he's willing to come face to face with a foe that's much larger than he is. And no surprise here, it's a group of eggs. Large female bluegills can lay up to 50,000 eggs or more, and after spawning, the male bluegill drives the female from the nest and assumes sole responsibility for the eggs. Male bluegills swim in circles just above their nest to keep them free of any sediment that could cover and suffocate the eggs or the newly hatched fry. Here, the male bluegill also uses its large tail fin to sweep the eggs clean of debris just before it gets back to circling the nest again. This circling motion is also a good way to scan the area around the nest for potential danger. These nesting pits are scattered all over this part of the lake, and some of them are as wide as two feet across and nearly a foot deep. Male bluegill rarely eat when they're guarding the nest, but the sight of a fisherman's lure near the eggs or the fry can trigger a territorial response in the protective male bluegill, causing it to take the fisherman's bait in an effort to defend its young from a perceived threat. Many fishermen target bluegill breeding colonies such as this one in search of large males who will put up a vigorous fight, but it's best to leave these large males to do their business of raising the next generation of bluegills. These areas near the shoreline are important nurseries for thousands upon thousands of baby fish that then enter the food chain and become food for countless other species, both terrestrial and aquatic. And those few offspring that do survive to adulthood will go on to become the next generation of beautiful sunfish in this amazing lake. Slackjaw Pete and his friends are all about protecting the next generation, and they mean business. These little fish are fighters, and they'll fiercely defend their young against all intruders. Some of them, such as Slackjaw Pete, were even brave enough to swim right up to the camera and give it a good bite. Slackjaw Pete really wants me to leave, so I think I'll go, but not before I stop and say hello to a bluegill named Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe also has a group of eggs that he's defending. And now that our tour of this bluegill breeding colony is coming to an end, I hope that you've gained a deeper understanding and respect for these often neglected panfish. Though small and sometimes seen as a nuisance for those seeking bigger game, these beautiful little bluegill are a vital part of the lake's ecosystem. And one has to appreciate their bravery and their commitment to protecting their offspring from danger. 
these little fish are remarkable survivors in a world filled with threats from both above and below the waterline. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a spectacular day.